When God created man and put man in the garden, God instructed man that of everything in the garden he may freely eat, but he gave an instruction that the tree of the, the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, man should not eat of it, because in the day that he eats of it, he will die. Now, many times, uh, people focus on that word and say that is the cause. But there is a spiritual truth that God was you know, putting across. The spiritual truth is not about that fruit. The spiritual truth God was putting across was not about that fruit. It was about obedience, obedience to the voice of the Lord. It was not about the fruit. Amen. He said you should not eat of the fruit of the tree. Because the day you will eat, you eat it, you will die. That is true. But what was God trying to teach? What was he teaching? He was teaching that obedience to the voice of the Lord is crucial. That is what makes you to show that you have subjected yourself unto God and that indeed you have allowed God to rule over you. And you have to do it willingly. Praise the Lord. It was not to be forced. In the case of Satan, it's a forced subordination. Whether you like it or not, you are subjected. That is why devils are coming to people and oppress them. There is no invitation. We have to pray for the Holy Ghost to come inside of us. The Holy Spirit just will just come inside of us. We have to pray. Amen. Nobody is saved by force. We have to pray. Amen. When you look at Romans, everything we do in Christ is willfully, willful submission. So that was what God was teaching in Genesis chapter 3. He wanted to teach us willful submission. Not by coercion, not by force, not by fear, but a willful surrender to God. That is how God can ruin our lives. A willful surrender. And it is through this willful surrender that we can walk in obedience. Understand this truth. Because the scripture is not just there. We focus on the fruit. But that was not what God was trying to teach us. He was trying to teach us that my word must be supreme. So when he gave them the word, another came. That is why it is fully recorded for us. Look at Genesis chapter 3. Another came after God has spoken. Understand the sequence and know what is going on. God has spoken in Genesis chapter 2. <coughs> Amen. Verse 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, Thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Praise the Lord. Now God is able to give them power never to touch that fruit. God is able to make that tree a forbidden tree to the extent that they will not even have access to it. He's able to surround it. We, we know that when he drove them out of the garden, the Bible says that he surrounded the uh, uh, he placed at the entrance of the garden flaming swords so that they could not come in. So he could have put flaming swords be around the tree so that they could not do anything about it. But he wanted them to willfully make a decision and to willfully surrender to the will of God. So it's not about the tree, it's about obedience to the voice of the Lord. You know? Amen. So again we see in Genesis chapter 2, the Bible says, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yet had God said, He shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the trees which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, He shall not eat of it, neither shall he touch it, lest he die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat down, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as God, knowing good and evil. Praise the Lord. Amen. It is interesting to note that at this point that this conversation was going on, God was there. How many people believe that God was there? God was there. Why? Because he is Jehovah Shaman. He is everywhere present. Praise the Lord. 
Number two, he did not interrupt the one that was speaking. He allowed him to bring forth his good point. He did not interrupt the devil. When the devil was contradicting the word of God, God did not say, no, you are contradicting me, because he was there. If it's Jehovah Shaman, then he must have been there. Praise the Lord. Amen. If he feels all things in all things, then he must have been there. If nothing is hidden in his sight, then he must have been there. Praise the Lord. Amen. He never interrupted the one that is speaking. Not those things. Praise the Lord. Now, when the dialogue ensued between the man and the, I mean, between the uh, serpent and the woman, the Lord said nothing to the woman. Don't listen to him. He's trying to deceive you. Move away from me. He never said that. These things are important for us to know. It points to the righteousness and justice of God. It means that even in the kingdom of God, we can see that God is saying that everyone has a right of sin. It is not only the United States of America that says where you can protest, you can say whatever you like. It's freedom of speech. It began in the kingdom of God. This is freedom of speech. He gave him room to say what he wanted to say. Amen. Amen. He gave the woman room. He never told the woman, get out of the place. Don't listen to him. He gave them, all of them, liberty. That is why when we hear the word, the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. It's very important for us to know who God is. He gives to every one of us liberty. Liberty of expression, liberty of decision. Liberty of what? Of expression, liberty of decision. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, what God was waiting for was the decision of the man. And that is still the principle until today. Up until now, God never stops the devil from whispering into the ears of any believer. Amen. He never stops the enemy from putting thoughts into the heart of any one of his children. Amen. But he leaves them the uh, gives them the free will, the choice to do whatever they hear from the devil by themselves. But there is a principle here, and that principle is given to us by the Bible. When you become born again and a child of God, the first thing God puts in your hand is his word. How does he put it in your hand? There, is, there are Bibles now for one dollar. There are Bibles now for two dollars. Amen. There are Bibles now that are free, that you can get free. Amen. So you cannot tell yourself that you don't have access to the word of God. So he, it has packaged, he has packaged this thing for us. That is why he said in Isaiah chapter 34, 16, Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and do what? Amen. And read. I have given you my book, I have given you my word, I have given you my instruction. Seek ye out of that book and read. Praise the Lord. For none of this will fail, nor want is made. For my mouth has commanded it, just as I commanded that man in the garden. My mouth has commanded this scripture. Let's go to the place. Isaiah chapter 34. Praise the Lord. Holy Spirit, we thank you for this blessing. Blessed be your name, O Lord. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. You are gracious and wonderful. You are marvelous. Glory be to your name, O Lord. Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16. The Bible says, Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail. All the words you see in this, the book of the Lord is the Bible. The seek ye out of the book of the Lord. He, that is the Holy Bible. This is the book of the Lord. This book in your hand is the book of the Lord. All other books were made by others. There are economic books that are made by people. And their names are written on it. That is why you will never see the name of any man here as the author of this book. No man. You can't say the Holy Bible by Pastor Susu and so. No way. Amen. 
the Holy Bible is the Holy Bible. It is the book of the law. It's the one who made this book, praise the Lord. So he says, seek ye out of that book and read. Read to understand. Read to know what, I, what, I, what, what my, my views are. Read to know what I think of you. Read to know my instructions for you. Praise the Lord. No one of these shall fail. Understand that this word that you will read in this book, they are steadfast, they are in error, there is no error in them. Praise the Lord. None shall want a mate. That is, there is no time you will take this word and you say one came to pass and the other does not come to pass. All of them must come to pass. Praise the Lord. And then he said, for my mouth it hath commanded. Just as he commanded the man in the garden, in the, in the book of Genesis chapter 2, verse 16, he said, and he commanded the man. Alright, so this word that is contained in the Bible is also commanded by the mouth of the Lord. And his spirit, it had gathered them. Praise the Lord. Amen. So what are we driving at? What principle the Lord is showing to us is this. I will give you my word. I will show you my will. I will deliver to you uh, my own instructions. And I will leave you to deal with that instruction as you desire. Amen. Amen. I will instruct you to do it, but whether you do it or not will be your own decision. So if you obey my voice, then I have rule over you. Amen. Amen. I have control over your life. And then I can do what I've decided to do in your life as you walk in obedience to my voice. But if another comes to you, amen, and gives you another word that is contrary to my word, and you choose to go by that word, that one will now rule over you and will do in your life whatsoever he pleases. Why? Because you have chosen by obeying his voice to surrender to him. You have chosen the one who will rule over you. You choose that one by your obedience to his voice. Praise the Lord. God rules in our lives by our obedience to his word. Satan rules in the lives of those who, who or in whom he rules by their obedience to his voice. Praise the Lord. Now look at Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. This is how Satan got the authority. He got the authority because he gave instructions on to the man, and man took that instruction. So man chose to subordinate himself under Satan, and because it is legitimate, it is his right, and it is free will, and he exercises the way he wanted, God could not contradict him. God could not say, no, you shouldn't do that. It is illegal. No. The legal right of the devil was established at the Garden of Eden where man chose to obey the voice of the Lord or where man chose to disobey the voice of God. Praise the Lord. Look at Romans chapter 6. Hallelujah. The Bible says, verse 16, Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants, ye are to whom ye obey. Amen. If we obey the voice of the Lord, we will be servants of God. If we obey the voice of Satan, we will be servants of Satan. Now, which was which one is better? To be the servant of Satan or to be the servant of God? So, it is you that is taking the decision. To whomsoever you yield yourself to obey, then you are the servant of that one whom you obey. Praise the Lord. And then it says, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. So when you walk in obedience, you walk in righteousness. You see the point? When you walk in obedience, you walk in righteousness. It is impossible for a person to say, I am walking in righteousness when he will not obey the voice of the Lord. Praise the Lord. So in the uh, garden, when man chose to obey the voice of the devil or disobey the voice of God, then he chose to serve Satan. And that is how he began to rule over mankind. So we 
that it was true deception. He contradicted the word of God and he presented, he twisted the word and presented God in a different way. And that is still the same thing this, uh, the devil does until now. He always contradicts the voice of the Lord. He always presents God in a way that uh, uh, to show that he's your enemy or he does not have your good intention at heart or he does not want to bless you or he does not want to or he does not care enough and things like that. Or that he's withholding something from you that you ought to have had. Don't believe him, don't listen to him. Because once you do, then you come under his rule. Amen. So this authority, therefore, which he received is legal. It is what? Legal. God is a judge. When you hear the word just, just, when you hear the word legal, when you hear the word righteous, you are talking of legality. Praise the Lord. Because righteous is talking of what is right as opposed to what is wrong. And if somebody is concerned with what is right as opposed to what is wrong, it means that somebody has decided to judge between what is right and wrong. And God is that judge. Praise the Lord. And he will not violate what is legal. Even though the rule of Satan was legal, he obtained it illegally. You see the point? That is what gave God, the, there are two things that give God the right, or there are many things that give God the right to intervene in the uh, affairs of men. One, even though the rule of Satan over mankind or not is legal, he obtained that uh, rule legal. I mean illegally. Praise the Lord. He obtained it illegally. That's number one. Number two, that rule violates the original intention of God. It is righteous of God to work all things after the counsel of his will. Number three, God who owns all things and has determined the way things should work has the right to intervene when you don't work the way that he wants it to work. You see the point? That is what saved man. That is what saved man that caused our Lord Jesus Christ to be able to step into his if it were not for all these truths and all these facts, it would be impossible and man would be gone and gone forever. Thank God because of the original intention of God. Thank God because he obtained the, uh, 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 the authority illegally. And thank God because God who is the creator of all has rule and right over what he has created to be able to, uh, 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 to, to deal with it the way he so ever chooses. Praise the Lord. So Satan employs deception to dominate, to frustrate, to convert, to confiscate, and destroy people's blessings. Listen, he obtain, he uses deception to dominate. He uses deception to frustrate. He uses deception to convert the blessings of people. He uses deception to confiscate the blessings. Whatever the devil is going to steal from you, amen, understand that he will use deception. It's a pointer. Don't be deceived. That is why the Lord Jesus Christ, the most things he talked about when they came to him and said, when, what shall be the, the sign of your coming? When shall it be? He said, be not deceived. Be not deceived. Be not deceived. Be not deceived. Because deception is the chief weapon of the devil. Praise the Lord. Amen. So his rule is repressive and oppressive. His power is exerted in forced labor and slavery. He is wicked. He is brutal. He is evil. He rules through fear and coercion. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. There are certain manifestations of His rule. What are these manifestations? You see various forms of uh, manifestation in the form of immorality, in sickness, in disease, in sudden death, in oppression, bondage, in poverty, in failures, in all kinds of diabolical things, all kinds of difficulties, all kinds of stress, all kinds of evil. That is how you know the devil is in, is in control, praise the Lord. He has no good thing for any man. His role is to kill. His role is to steal. His role is to destroy, praise the Lord. That is what he has come for. There is no one that is so close to Satan that he will not destroy. There is no one that is so close to Satan that he will not steal from. There is no one that is so close to Satan that he will not kill. That is what he does. He steals, 
the people's blessing. He steals their right, he steals their joy, he kills their fortunes, he destroys their life. That is what he does. Praise the Lord. Amen. So there are so many signs that we can look at and be able to discern. Is there the work of evil around or not? We can look at people's life. We can observe what is happening in the family and be able to determine. So how do we determine this? There are so many reasons. If there are a consistent, premature, or sudden death in families, it may be due to the working of the voice of darkness. Sudden death, you hear it every time it keeps happening, may be due to the work of, you know, darkness. They are premature, they are not old as it were, and all of a sudden, and it keeps on happening. They are the works of darkness. Praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, a person may be sick. These are, these, these are strange words. You need to know that. A person may be sick and go to the hospital and they check him out, everything, and he's perfect. And yet he may die if care is not taken. Even though there is no medical basis for whatever is wrong in this body. That's it. That's it. That, that's the devil at work. Praise the Lord. He says he's sick. They check all his body, all the vital organs, every blood uh, uh, work, everything, MRI, whatever you talk about is, is okay. Sound in mind, you know, according to the, the, the medical checkup. Sound in the body, according to medical checkup. And then he still dies. Even though there is nothing to show that he's sick. That's the satanic of praise the Lord. I once had of things, and I'm, I'm going to give several examples of the things that I've seen in this. There was a woman that was driving, broad daylight, in the car with her children. And she saw a person came and struck her head with an axe. But she was the only person that saw that person. Nobody saw this person. But she saw this person clearly struck her on the head with an axe. And from that moment forward, she was plagued with troubling, troubling headache. Very terrible headache. He took the power of God by prayer to deliver her. Praise the Lord. We are talking of the powers of darkness. Amen. I want you to know that, you know, we have seen some things. There was a woman that we ministered to. My wife will remember this woman very well. She had a house. She rented a house with her husband. Her husband was an evangelist. But in that house, something, that was her story, something told her, you cannot be pregnant in this house. You will not be pregnant in this house. Every time she got pregnant, at three months, she would have a miscarriage. Before the miscarriage, she would have a dream. And immediately after the dream, the baby would be aborted. And then she came to us at our fellowship in Nigeria, Lagos, Nigeria, Sunday uh, fellowship we do, uh, fellowship, fellowship every Sunday after church in the evening. She came and expressed her situation. And we are sure that no, this thing will not happen again. And we prayed with her. The same month, oh, excuse me, can you please turn down the uh, info? Amen. Now, you can put it off. Now, we prayed with her, and the same month she was pregnant. Amen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I'm talking of spiritual forces and what happens when the power of darkness is in operation. Three months after her pregnancy, she had the regular dream that she used to have. And immediately before, when she had that dream, the baby would come. But immediately she had the dream, she ran again to the fellowship. I have had that dream. And again we pray, and we bound uh, Satan and all devilish work, that there will be no miscarriage, and that that baby will be born. She gave birth to a baby girl at full time. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Immediately after that, she got pregnant and gave birth to twins. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. We are talking of the power 
of darkness. Praise the Lord. There can be other manifestations of the powers of darkness. And it can include bondage to sin. People are doing the same sinful thing. They don't want to do it, but they keep on doing it, and doing it, and doing it, and doing it. They do it, they feel bad, and then they go out of it, and then they come back into it. These are demonic and satanic works, and the Lord will break each and every one of them in the name of Jesus Christ. I have noticed people who might be drinking, amen, and then they get drunk, and then they go into stupor and all those things, and they hate it, and confess that they hate the thing, that they will still go forward irresistibly in the same in the same thing. Praise the Lord. Amen. Some people are called kleptomania. It doesn't matter how much they have, they will still steal. Praise God. Yes? I don't know if you know this, but they call alcohol spirits. Yes. If you look around, you see that it's called it's spirits. spirits. Isn't that strange? Yes, amen. These are spiritual things. Amen. Thank God for that contribution. Alcohol is called spirit. So the spirit in the drink captivates the people. Amen. And keeps bringing them back. Everything, that is why I told us that when we look at this act and look at the natural uh, environment, we are making mistakes. Things are controlled in the spirit realm. Everything essentially is spiritual. Praise the Lord. Everything essentially is spiritual. You will not make a mistake if you address any issue from a spiritual point of view before you ever consider the natural thing. You are not going to make any mistake. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because as he said, you know, alcohol, they are called spirits. And once they come into the life of somebody, they control him. That is why the Bible says, be not filled with wine, in which is dissipation. But be filled with the Holy Spirit. There is a spirit that you can fill you. And I tell people that when you look at that scripture, in the book of Galatians chapter 5, let's look at it. Galatians chapter 5. When we look at this scripture, people uh, need to understand what it is really saying. What it is really saying. Look at this uh, Be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Hmm? No, no, it's no. not in Isaiah. Uh, it's not in Galatians chapter 5. Is it 419? No. Where is it? Can somebody help me with this scripture? Be not drunk with wine. But we feel we want to be not drunk in, with, with wine in, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be not drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. I want you people to uh, search the scriptures. Search the scriptures. Ready to go. Ephesians 5.18. Uh, Ephesians 5.18. Let's look at that. That is it. Glory be to God. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Ephesians 5.18. Yes. That is why, you know, thank God for concordance. Look at uh, verse 18. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess. Uh, in the NIV he said, in which is dissipation. Amen. So wherein is excess. But be filled with this with the spirit. Now, when wine fills a person, that is a kind of spirit. Because as as the, uh, um, Jesse has you know told us truthfully and and uh, clearly, yes, they are called spirits. Amen. So that sp spirit in that wine controls the person. There is no way you can see a person that is filled with wine and you will not know him. He doesn't need to tell you that he's filled with wine. Praise the Lord. He doesn't need to tell you he has been drinking. Once you see him, you know that well, this one is filled with wine. So, God